Hi everyone, this is Dan from Headmania and today I'm going to finally do the review on ZMF Atrium headphones. I've actually been owning them for a good while now and I've been impressed uh, by the ZMF um, Caldera for a while and I do own them as well. One of my favorite headphones of all time and I still enjoy them quite a lot. But I was actually curious at one point, I was like, I want to hear the Atrium in my system <laughs> so i contacted the audio prime prime audio um, uh, store in uh, romania and i managed to get my hands on a pair of zmf atriums the idea at the beginning was that i was actually only going to test them but i ended up buying them because i love them so much so you can see here, they look a bit similar. Uh, they do have a different grill there, their grill formation. This is how you actually can differentiate between different models of ZMS headphones. Um, I'm, I would have, if I, if I would buy them again, I would actually uh, get the limited edition because of the better uh, uh, wood design. Uh, but definitely these are amazing on their own. It's just about the design itself, which is not bad. It's actually quite nice with the wooden wolf cast, but I prefer this, um, the look of the uh, calderas here. So, <clears throat> it has been quite a joyful ride with these headphones. Um, and yes, I've seen they, they are already quite popular on the internet, and it's actually one of the reasons that I wanted to try them myself. also heard them at the... Um, um, the Munchen Audio Show, in both 2023 and 2024th. Uh, and uh, actually, this year I already had them. So I, were, I was owning them at that point. So let me give you a bit of my experience here. I will always give you the written review, which you can find uh, related below. You will also uh, be able to find the measurements of the GMF atriums over there. But these are definitely one of my favorite headphones of all time. Why? Because they make everything sound amazing. It's the, 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 the textures are so colorful, so lively, so vibrant. Um, it's like everything comes to life. The bass is one of the most fun experiences with bass I've ever had in my life. Yes, I did hear more technical bass, faster, more detailed, um, and extended with different layers, but this is extremely fun. It hits you like a truck, <laughs> and it goes quite deep. And it adds a fun factor, which is really hard to achieve without sounding dull or uh, slow. So it gives a decay that is a bit slower, but not slower, but it, it uh, lingers a bit. It makes the note fuller. So for example, when a drum is hit, like you feel the full extension of that, um, the, 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 of that housing, of that drum, right? And it is without making the sound sound slow. So this is an amazing achievement. It brings a lot of euphony into the sound signature. And it's one of the best, one of the most fun bass I've ever heard in my life. It is amazing. Now, if we go to the mid-range, the mid-range is also where the magic is at. So the lower mid-range is very present. And the upper mid-range is really, really present as well. A lot of energy going on here. The uh, mid-range is full of life, full of textures. Uh, it has like everything comes to life. It's like if you hear like an instrument were out of wood, it's like you can feel the wood. If you you feel the 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 chords vibrating, you have you you hear the vocals like you're like an ACMR experience, like they're singing into your uh, ears. And I would say that this is kind of one of the most interesting or most euphonic experiences in the mid-range that I've ever heard so far. Um, and if we go into the treble region, this is interesting because, yes, I've heard more detailed treble, uh, a little bit more um, 
not only more detail but a little bit with more impact in the treble but definitely it has a lot here going on for it itself so it kind of it becomes more apparent and more detailed of seven kilohertz uh, but it's really natural it does present detail and the, i would i would say that it never never ever bothered me once but it all but all i enjoyed it so i listened to classical music and other things and it, the treble sounded real. That's very important. It gives it gives me uh, a lot of the information there. There it gives me euphony. It integrates very well with the rest of the sound signature. I don't have any sharp uh, edges on anything or aftertaste like metallic or plasticky aftertaste. No, it's re a, a lifelike real treble, right? So overall, the experience I would say that it's really uh i would say that it's a tonality that is very natural but also colorful right so it's not only uh i mean it is a natural way or a colorful way as well because it kind of accentuates the natural aspects in the music uh, because it will have more textures so for example vocals will sound with more texture more livelier you will have instruments that vibrate the chords vibrate with more life you will find that the uh, the, the drums or the bass or everything that has a bigger um a bigger housing will will sound and accentuate the material that it made of especially if they're wood so basically it will bring this naturality into place in a kind of a colorful way but in a very euphonic manner and this is why this these are these became one of my favorite headphones of all time so there will everything you put on them from rock hip-hop classical music it sounds amazing and i would say that actually for example classical music i would say that yeah i thought that i would not enjoy them as much but they i enjoy them a lot because they do present decent detail yes i've heard more detail headphones but the way it pops the instrument into the uh, into the, the sound stage the into the actually the experience and the way it makes everything um, lively and pop in with energy and life um it's it's amazing so the instrument sounds so vibrant so alive and so real lifelike to some degree so actually yeah they sound lifelike so this is this is an amazing experience with this headphone so if you have never heard the atriums i would definitely recommend you to actually take a really good listen to these headphones now um you will see in the graph that if you want to compare them to uh, Caldera, it's interesting that, for example, they are more euphonic than Caldera in terms of, or the bass is more present than on Caldera, uh, especially between 30 kilohertz and uh, 300 uh, kilohertz. Um, I, and um, <clears throat> that is apparent when you listen to them. Caldera has a more flatter sound bass, if you, if you want to think of it like that, but it definitely compared to... Uh, to, uh, to the HMs has that. I would say that Caldera also has, even if it has a very good linear in general presence in uh, transition from the uh, bass to the mid range up to 3.5 three, uh, three, 3 kilohertz, it's quite linear. Um, HM has a bit more presence in between 2 and 3 kilohertz, uh, but uh, it's in line with the higher bass. So I would say that the linearity in, in Caldera is a bit more uh, uh, apparent as well. Um, now, yes, they are more alike than not. Um, I would say that Caldera has a more uh, consistent treble experience. Um, I would say that in general, Caldera has more details, bring, brings more layers into the sound. I've seen situations, for example, in a few of them, where female vocals had more layers of information, which made to help me to understand more emotion or get more emotion from that uh, song. Uh, however, the um, um, the atrium is a bit more colorful, and the decay and everything else is like more a bit more vibrant. So this this both of them are really really good, and I couldn't pick 
one of them, so that's why I own both of them. I'm actually afraid of listening to other ZMF headphones or have listening to it on my system. I am afraid of listening to the very to close door open because I feel like I will own a, a third ZMF headphone. So it's not, <laughs> but I, it's a really high risk to, to that. Um, the bass on Caldera is a bit faster. It, it's not as punchy, but it does not hit as, as much as on the atrium, but it's not far behind it. Um, I would say that the bass on, on Caldera is a bit uh, tighter, it presents a bit more layers, the detail and um, faster. Um, the one on Patreon punches uh, stronger and, and uh, it has a more, uh, uh, the decay is a bit more euphonic in terms of it's, not, it's a bit slower but in a fun way. The um, mid-range is more detailed on the Calderas, a bit more colorful on the um, uh, atrium uh, in terms of you you get like if you if you look at the image right you get like more colorful images and more detailed that's in other in other situations where caldera is kind of more, more detailed and this is a little bit more colorful here um, both are great in this zone of course the treble in details in general goes to the caldera if you ask me <clears throat> but it, it's very hard because it's kind of i told you it's kind of they, they kept the same kind of philosophy in sound. So they're both on the euphonic side. It's very hard if I had to pick one. I would, uh, it's it's hard, it's hard because I, I love them so much, both of them. Um, and I keep switching from one to the other. So it, it, I probably it might get big out there, but I'm not so sure. Definitely they're, they're, they're amazing and the fact that this, this is a very close to lifelike experience in terms of, because the biocellular driver, it's kind of, it doesn't have that aftertaste in the, uh, uh, the sound. It, it's kind of, um, it, it's a clean end of that sound. I don't know how to tell you. It's not a, uh, this doesn't have a metallic aftertaste like other uh, headphones, like other planners. Uh, it's actually very good in that domain. The, uh, I'm talking about the calderas, but um, I would say that this is even more apparent because they're, they're, the driver is different. I would say that this is also an interesting thing you have to, to test for yourself. Um, they're also very clean in sound. And you can see that even the measurements that they actually have a low uh, THD, um, well kept below 1% on all the frequency range. So that's good. That's uh, quite... An achievement. By the way, this is these are the um, uh, stock pads that they come with, but the the, th the thicker ones, not the, the 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 thin ones. I ended up preferring the the thicker ones as I did with the calderas. So uh, yeah, um, these are amazing. I'm really happy that I managed to um, uh, to finish the review. Sorry for the delay, but I was really kind of busy this period. And I also got a lot of diseases for the kids. They bring the, the, the stuff from school. <laughs> Even now, I think I have something you know, like um, hard to, to organize for this review. But yeah, this is it. Um, I'm going to try to bring you a bit more reviews coming soon. The Zenheiser 620 and the EA, which is actually quite he right here um, in my hands. <laughs> And um, I actually managed to buy the T plus A Solitaire P. This is, uh, is going to be an interesting review. So thank you for watching. Uh, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It helps me, motivates me to bring you more reviews because this is just a hobby of mine. I'm not doing it for anything else other than wanting to share my opinion with you guys. So thank you again, have a great evening and see you in the next review.